my math right, that makes Augeas older than Bitcoin. I have no idea what that means. It's not as profitable as Bitcoin, but yeah, I thought it was important to mention. Okay, so what's, what's the problem that Augeas tries to solve? Um, right, like what, why would you use it? Um, why does it even exist? So the core problem is that there's lots of situations where you want to edit configuration files programmatically. Yeah, meaning you're writing a script, be it a bash script or you know, some Python code, Ruby code, C code, what have you. Um, and as part of that, you need to fiddle some configuration settings somewhere. And as an example, um, if you look at, um, yeah, at this little problem here, in your SSHD config, you want to um, turn off uh, root logins, and you're like, yeah, stand back, I know regular expressions, I know set, and yeah, you come up with this, which uh, works great until you realize that yeah, the number of spaces before the yes could be variable, right? Some people put tabs there, some people put five spaces there. Now my clicker doesn't work. Sorry, it won't advance the slides. There. Um, and so, yeah, you come up with a slightly more complicated set thing to catch that case. Then you realize, oh, besides yes and no, you know, there's a bunch more options that people can set with the permit, permit root login. You want to get rid of all of them. Um, so 10 minutes later, you're at this beauty here, um, and you're like, wow, we're done, right? Everything works. Um, you do a little grab just to check, and then this happens, right? Like some... <laughs> um, and that's, that's a, yeah, sort of small, annoying problems that, yeah, that you encounter when you do that, and if you have to do enough of those, it gets really, really annoying. So in a way, you can think of Augeas as, yeah, as a repository of yeah, all the knowledge that you have to have, all these stupid little things you need to know when you want to do something like yeah, changing the, the root login in a configuration file. Um, at the core of the problem, or what makes this, this really, really interesting is that um, there's a bazillion different file, file formats for configuration files. Um, you can look at that as sort of you know, pointless creativity. Um, and yeah, at first, I, I sort of looked at it that way too, but there's also, yeah, configuration files are um, user interface in, in, in a way, right? And, and they have a, I don't know, mouthfeel to them. You're not going to get confused whether you're editing the HTTPD conf or the Nginx config, right? Like they, they give the whole thing a, a certain feel. Um, and so, yeah, preserving these configuration files and just dealing with them as they are is, is really, really important to Augeas. Like, we're not going to go and say, oh, we'll just start over, yeah, everybody change their daemons or other programs that read configuration, um, because we have this awesome store that makes it much easier to programmatically change th things. Um, we have to live in the world that exists, and yeah, that, that reality of all these different fo file formats is, is part of that reality. Um, another thing, yeah, when, you <coughs> when you write code that needs to fiddle configuration files, uh, an easy, easy trap to fall into is um, you think about it for a moment and you're like, oh, this is really easy. I know exactly how I'm going to break this down and, and parse the file into a data structure that I can then change. Um, the really hard part is actually making changes, because you know, not just because of all the edge cases I, I had in that example, um, but also because you need, to, um, you need to preserve a lot of unimportant detail. Like people get really grumpy if you strip out the comments just because you, know, you use they used your tool to make some small change. People are really attached um, to the formatting of their files. Um, that's yeah, something that turns up in bug reports when we get that wrong um, a lot of times. Yeah. Screwed it up. Um, okay. There's a long-standing debate in the config management world whether you should even try to um, to modify configuration files, yeah, or whether you should not just um, manage files yeah, wholesale, like you know, whenever you need to make a change, you change a template or the, the golden copy you have in source control and that then just copy it out. Um, I'm not going to get into that debate. Um, I just want to note that there's, there's a lot of cases where that's just not feasible. One example is, for example, um, the Let's Encrypt folks. Um, they, um, they have a little client that you know, downloads an SSL certificate for, for your web server 
but it also edits the configuration of your web server to have it, you know, to have all your virtual hosts use that new certificate that you just downloaded. And so they can't go and just you know, write over your HTTP conf, right? They need to go in there and find the exact places where you define virtual hosts and then switch their configuration to use the, uh, the Let's Encrypt SSL certificate. And they actually use Augeus for, for fiddling with the yeah. Apache, for the Apache config. Okay, so how does it work? Um, as I said, yeah, we handle configuration files the way they are. Yeah, there's no need to have like special annotations in them, right? You don't have to have comments in them that say, you know, don't change, this is managed or something like that. Uh, you can totally make changes with Augeus, then go back, edit the file with BI, change with Augeus again, that's, that's totally fine. Um, and yeah. Um, one, one important point of Argus is that, that it parses these files into a data structure and we use the same data structure for everything. That's you know, somebody earlier said Argus, that's, that's the thing with the tree. Yeah, it's exactly, that's, that's the tree. Like, you know, when we parse a file, we parse it into, into a tree and I'll talk a little bit more about what the tree looks like in a minute. Um, I already talked about how, uh, how people get really, really grumpy when you screw up sort of unimportant stuff. Right, if you're just adding an alias in Etsy hosts, yeah, if Etsy hosts is all of a sudden reordered and has no comments anymore, people wouldn't like that very much. Okay, and so I hope you're enjoying this vintage 2009 slide. This is yeah, <coughs> what you can do with uh, Open Office from back then. Um, yeah, so, so the way to th uh, the way August works is, you know, think of the blue box as the library uh, that gives you an API. Um, when, you, when you start using it, you say, you know, load a bunch of files, and what that does is, is that the um, library reads the files you want to, to, um, want to manage, um, and it uses something called a lens, that's this green thing here, to turn this file into a tree, right? This might be Etsy hosts here, and this might be Apache config, what have you. Um, and then you use the API to make changes to this tree. You can find things in there. It's actually got a pretty powerful query language built in that's sort of close to XPath. I don't know how many fans of XPath we have in here, but yeah, for, for these things, it's actually useful. Um, but yeah, so you make changes to the tree, and then you say, yeah, save, save my changes, and that's where the lenses get involved again. The, you, know, you take the part of the tree for Etsy hosts, send it through the lens, and that produces yeah, an updated file. Um, and yeah, so these lenses are, are the thing that sort of encodes the knowledge we have about each file format. That you, know, you have to have a different one for each file format. Um, and that's you know, one of the things that I've heard people say is like, yeah, oh, Augeus would love to use it, but I don't really know how to write lenses. And I've heard it's really hard. Um, in general, at this point, that's probably the you know, 10 years on part of the talk, you don't have to write lenses. Like, yeah, what you know about lenses after listening to me for the last two minutes is about as much as you need to know. Um, to use Augeus, um, I did a little graph um, of the number of different file form. Oh, I didn't change the title of the slide. This is really different file formats that, that Augeus can deal with. Right, really early on, this is like me writing about 10 of them, and then Raphael Persson, I don't know if he's here, um, showed up, and he did a tremendous amount of work just on the lenses, and you know, really helped both wrote a ton of them and helped a lot of people um, write their own lenses and get them in and get them in a shape that we could um, ship them as part of the distribution. So right now we're at a little over 200 lenses. Um, we have 200 different file formats that, that Augeus can deal with. Um, I think the curve is taper, tapering off exactly because um, this isn't good, is it? Uh, because, we're, uh, because we're at the point where yeah, Augie is out of the box, knows enough about most file formats. Okay, so this is going to be interesting now. The, I don't know, the uh, video kept cycling in and out. I can try to... Re there. Okay, I, I just have to talk really, really fast before the picture goes away again. Um, So if you, yeah, how can you use Argus? What, what do you need to do to use it? Um, 
first off, it's uh, as I said, it's a C library. The the writing it in C was you know, not fun, but sort of um, sort of uh, on purpose because I want to make uh, Augies usable from as many languages as possible, and C is sort of the lingua franca there. Uh, we have language bindings for yeah, pretty much anything you can think of. Um, the, the thing I'm really sad that's missing is intercal. So if anybody here feels like they want to contribute intercal bindings for Augies, um, totally do that. Um, the other way you'll encounter Augies in the wild is you know, in, in configuration management system systems. Quite a few of them have you know, some form of Augies support built in. Um, and yeah, I hope you realize what I'm doing with the slide, right? Like if you're configuration management system does not include support for Augeus, it's not top shelf, so you might want to complain about it. Okay, so the, the easiest way to get started is something called Aug tool. It's a little command line tool, um, and if you run help, it prints out all the commands it knows. The, the intent behind Aug tool is to, to really just let you explore how Augeus you know, deals with files, what the tree looks like, search things in the tree, make changes. Um, before you incorporate that into your, your programs. Um, it's really mostly meant as a tool to get familiar with the API and, and get a feel for it, although some people have started you know, using that in scripts. It's not, it's not ideal for scripts because some of the output is, is not great for, for processing afterwards. Um, and yeah, when somebody complained to me late last year about you know, that, that fact that Arc tool is sort of not really useful in, in bash scripts, um, I started thinking about you know, what could we do to make that better. Um, I didn't go all the way to you know, another command line tool to make changes, but I figured you know, because Augeus puts a lot of structure on, onto text files and you can query that structure, um, it would also be really useful to have a tool to just query um, you know, the way Augeus sees things without making changes. And you know, so I wrote this thing called AugMatch. Um, if you want to play with it. Um, it's really new in, you know, in 1101 and I just released that maybe a couple of weeks ago so it hasn't really hit all the distros yet. Um, but if you want to play with it, there's a docker container looter slash arc match um, that you can pull and that has everything in it and you can play around with it a little bit. Um, and just to give you a feel for both how arc match works and how Augie sees the world, um, a simple example is sort of the NFS exports file. Um, to, to find things in there. It's not entirely trivial. Um, yeah, it's simple, but not entirely trivial because you can have on each line, you can have yeah, any number of definitions for exports. So that makes it a little awkward to deal with yeah, for in, in grep or, or things like that. Um, but it's still simple enough that I can talk about it here without um, killing myself. Um, and so the first thing you can do is, um, yeah, if you just tell arc match, yeah, it's the exports, it just prints out the tree. Um, yeah, that's the tree that the lens has generated for, um, for that file. Um, and you can think of this tree almost like a file system. It's yeah, very similar to how a file system is organized with a few important exceptions. One, is, one of them is that siblings in the tree can have the same name. So this dir1 and dir2, they're really two different nodes in the tree, and they're both called dir. The one and two is just there to help you see that they're two different things. Similarly, like client has an option one and an option two, but they're really just called option, um, and yeah, the one and two is just there to, to dis distinguish them. Um, the other difference from a file system is that you know, even directories can have content associated with them. In August, that's called the value, like each node in the tree consists of a label and a value. Um, so dir both has yeah, some, some content associated with it, but it also has children. And the exports lens, how it, how it structures things, is like each of those dir entries is basically one line from, from Etsy exports. And for each client definitions, you get one of these client things, right? There's a client one here and a client two. And then it breaks you know, that into you know, whatever the network specification is for that and, and the options. So yeah, one simple thing you can do is um, just print out all, all the clients that you're exporting anything to. Like, just give me a list of the things that I'm exporting stuff to. Um, and yeah, with, with arc match, the important thing here is that you say, I want to match dir slash client. That means go through the tree, look at every dir node, then go to a client node, and that's the thing I'm talking about. 
Um, and then when we say exact, it just looks at that one node and not the stuff underneath it. Augmatch by default would print everything that you're matching in underneath it. Exact says yeah, just that node. And then only value says, only print the value of the node. I don't care about the path to how I get there. And so, yeah, that gives you a list of the, the things in Etsy export. Um, yeah, you can, of course, restrict that to just one export here. Right? And that the only change that you have to make is yeah, put this sla slash home into brackets here. Yeah, now you're saying what I want to match is a dir node that has slash home in it and then the client for that. So there's, there's lots of, I mean, yeah, I could go already talk for an hour about uh, these, these matches. They're called path expressions, and they're, they're the XPath stuff I mentioned earlier. Um, you could probably talk for an hour about yeah, lots of things, really cool things you can do with it. Um, one of the things you might want to do is, I don't know, is this legible in the back? The, I just realized that the red is probably not great. Um, one thing you might want to do is, um, just print me all the directories that I'm exporting where at least one client doesn't have root squash set. <laughs> right, so there's a sanity check um, to what I'm doing. So, yeah, we want to print slash local because it's exporting something without root squash. We want to print, print slash home. The first client has root squash set, but the second one doesn't. And, yeah, temp is okay, and pub is also not okay. We're only looking at root squash, not all squash. Um, and yeah, that's the sort of the arc match expression you would use for that. I don't want to go too much into, into too much detail how that works. Um, if you have questions, I'm more than happy to explain that later. Okay, so how can you get involved if you're yeah, if you're looking at this and you're like cool and you've tried played with it a little bit and yeah, you want to do things. Um, the, to, in my mind, the, the most important thing that August is missing right now is sort of reorganized documentation. There is a lot of documentation, but it's sort of, yeah, it's grown. That's another side effect of it being around for 10 years. Um, it's yeah, not well organized. It's yeah, sort of hard to find what you need. Um, if anybody feels like, yeah, like writing and, and doing stuff like that, I would love. Yeah. I've been looking at Gitbook to do that, but haven't gotten very far. Uh, would be really awesome to get some help there. Um, yeah, other things. The, yeah, I said we have a ton of language bindings. Um, yeah, they all could use some love uh, if, it, yeah, if it's just to make regular releases. Um, in some cases, yeah, they could be changed to be a little more idiomatic for the target target language, right? Rather than just being a straight up here's a C API and you can call it. Yeah, like yeah, in the in the Ruby bindings, we added yeah, throwing exceptions and stuff like that, which is just closer to how Ruby people want to use it. Um, yeah, the, the other bindings could use some love with it too. Uh, of course, there's always room to write more lenses. We're never going to run out of uh, configuration file formats that you know, somebody has come up and August can't cover yet. Um, and then, yeah, if you, if you want a really big project, um, <coughs> yeah, there's been, over the years, there's, there's been people who've, who've tried and made some headway. Um, the very first person that, um, that tried, that was one of my favorite problems ran into that during the build, while you compile Augeus, it creates a directory called AUX, and on Windows you can't do that. Like, Windows just blows up because that's your, whatever, serial device or something like that. But there's, yeah, there, there's more work to do there. Um, I mean, Augeus uses POSIX APIs, and you need to find ways to uh, around them on, on Windows. Or, yeah, go to the bug tracker. There's tons of, like, little bugs and yeah, stuff that, that you could help out with if you're interested. Okay, um, yeah, here's the website. The website has a quick tour that I highly recommend if you want to learn how to use it better. Um, it just walks you through some yeah, simple, simple examples of making changes to files with, with Augeus. Um, and there's also links to the mailing list and yeah, the source code, the GitHub repo, and so on. All right, and that's all I had. Um, other questions? The question is, um, is it able, uh, except uh, besides just showing the value, is it able to set the value? Um, Augeus underneath, yes. Um, and with Arc tool, you can do that. You can change values and then save the file. 
Um, I wrote augmatch specifically just for reading things. Like uh, augmatch right now doesn't give you a way to set things, but that might be an interesting addition to it. Sorry? Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, the, the, the question is, is about um, using something like augmatch in scripts to make changes. Um, I've loosely thought about So the question is, how, how does Argus know which lens to use and yeah, what format to expect? Um, and that's actually a lot less magic than, than you might think. Um, it's just like when you write a lens, you also say, oh, this applies to files that match the following globs, like, you know, like, like shell, shell globs. Uh, that, that's something you have with the lens. And so yeah, my examples here only work because the lens actually has, has a little statement in it that says, you know, this lens works for the, for the file slash etc slash exports. Um, there's ways to, yeah, if you have an exports file somewhere else, there's ways to say use this exports lens even though you don't know about that. But sort of for the default locations, yeah, August just knows automatically that, yeah, what to use for. Yep. Uh, YAML, yeah, the, yeah. So, yeah, this is the computer science part of the talk. Um, YAML is outside the realm of what, what Augeus can do um, because Augeus is restricted to, so initially Augeus was restricted to regular languages like any file format that you can describe with a regular language. At some point because Apache, I added support for, um, for context-free um, lang la uh, languages, but YAML is, is um, at least context sensitive because of all the, the spacing thing. There's ways around that if you have a special lexer you can turn you know, YAML into a context-free language, but yeah, none of that is in, in Argus today. And so there, there is a YAML lens, but it's, it's really restricted to you know, sort of one, one data structure, like it, that doesn't deal with indentation or nested things. So the question is, what about um, files where the, config or, yeah, where the configuration is spread out across multiple files, like a .d directory? Um, and yeah, Augus very consciously focuses just on the file level. Um, that, that was another sort of design decision I made early on, is that I don't want to add more than just syntax transformation to, to things. Um, I don't want to get into yeah, any sort of semantic thing. There was actually somebody um, on the mailing list who had some I've shied away from yeah, sort of include statements in yeah, a lot of configuration file formats say yeah, you can include from files um, and yeah, August doesn't even understand that yet, but yeah, I, I, I might add that. Um, but yeah it's, yeah, it's it's very much focused on sort of individual files and yeah, everything beyond that is sort of application logic from August's point of view. Yes? Um, yeah, so is it possible to write a, a Python port, like a pure Python port of Argus? And, yeah, some people have also asked, what about a pure Go port of Argus? Um, it's definitely possible. It's you know, sort of a matter of time. Um, there is, yeah, there's a lot of you know, fairly complicated stuff going on behind the scenes. Like, I wouldn't be keen to do that. I think you're looking at yeah, at least six months to a year um, for doing that. Um, that's like, yeah. I mean, for the language geeks here, there's, there's an early parser in there, and there's yeah, lots of fun, fun stuff in there. Um, so I would rather, yeah, for like the Ansible problem, um, I, I would 
look at you know, whether you can statically link stuff and just copy that over. Like just sta yeah, have a little binary stop or something like that. Uh, link link obvious in statically and then just